is bold faces federal ministry of works next level on the move the development of nigerian's infrastructures and its positive impact on industrialization and the economic empowerment cannot be overemphasized. Irrespective of COVID-19 global recession and government limited resources, our government is challenged to do more with less resources. My name is Trisha Esegbekeri and I'm your host. According to the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, our nation's wealth should be measured by its infrastructures. The Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, His Excellency Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN, and his very hardworking team are very passionate in their efforts in rehabilitation and building of new federal highways nationwide. We targeted about 22 routes or major routes for completion uh, in between 2020 and 2021. As I said, some of those plans have now changed because we couldn't work for three months of the second quarter, that is March, April to June, really because of the outbreak of the, the virus. But before then, we were all over the place. We were in a do. Uh, inspecting the Bini of Kene, Lokoja, uh, Bini Aochi, uh, Kene Road uh, through uh, Ekoma. The Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola SAN San, is fixated on rehabilitating and building of new federal highways in Nigeria in order to create accessibility and reduce the pains of road travelers across the country. Actually, his work is ongoing. So we have been visiting our sites in the, throughout the country. Uh, sometimes we go together with the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, uh, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, and sometimes uh, we divide ourselves into two. He goes this way, I go the other way. We were uh, in Delta on the Saplay Road. We were in, uh, uh, also on the Second Niger Bridge linking um, uh, Delta and Anambra states. We were. The Federal Ministry of Works and Housing officials have embarked on the FG at work next level nationwide inspection tour, 845 ongoing road contracts in all state of the Federation are being handled nationwide by the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. 80 of these projects have been prioritized to enhance the ease of doing business in the country, which includes the steady progress on three critical infrastructures, construction of the Second Niger Bridge, the rehabilitation, reconstruction, an expansion of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and the 375 km Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kanu Black Carriageway, a major trunk road linking the southern and northern part of Nigeria. We were in river states, we were in some parts of the southeast, we were in uh, Abia. So we were essentially covering uh, most of our high volume uh, traffic routes and places where there's usually pain during the rainy season. I have visited Kano uh, to uh, Meiduguri uh, twice before the, the, the lockdown. We have about five contracts there. Dantata uh, and Sawu, section one, we have uh, Setrako, section two, uh, we have uh, uh, Moda Car Section 3, we have CGC Section 4, we have uh, CCECC Section 5. These are very good contractors. 
very competent contractors. The work started 2006 during uh, uh, President Obasanjo regime, but it was awarded, but nothing was done there. Part of the decision we took uh, with my colleague, the senior minister, uh, Baba Tunje Raji Fashola, to ensure that we go around our project at this level, a high level supervision visit on all the projects handled by Julius Baja, then Zaria Kano, uh, and other projects around Kano up to Kazina, and then uh, Kano Meduguri project. And another one at Kano we are handling is the Kano bypass. This work was awarded since 2002, and it was abandoned because of lack of payment. When this government of uh, President Muhammad Buhari came in, a review, we reviewed the 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 the, 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 pro, the project and we re, uh, government it in 2017 and gave it another uh, completion time, which is 2021. So, like I said, uh, the contractor does not have any reason not to perform because we have put him on Sukuk funding. You know what scope funding is? The bond that we are having with the uh, Islamic Development Bank, where the, we ensure that there is a continuous flow of, uh, of, of funding to the project. Let me also speak to what this project means, what it is already delivering and what it can deliver. This project is a 414 billion Naira project. And I like to say that again, 414 billion Naira so far. The bridge on its own is 206 billion. The roads 2A and 2B, which His Royal Majesty has mentioned, will cost a combined 208 billion Naira. So in this community alone that is the amount of investment of the federal government of nigeria under president Buhari. and let me highlight the fact now if you want to applaud the president please do so let me highlight the fact that this commitment remains although the price of oil is now about 40 dollars per barrel so um, all is on track but in order to build this bridge and spend that money the contractors will be buying 644,000 tons of aggregates they don't keep those things so this is the economy that this investment generates people who produce and supply aggregates they would require all the way, and we see all of the sand filling, 4 million cubic meters of sand. That's the business that is in this economy because they won't bring sand from anywhere. They will require 68,000 tons of cement and 21,000 tons of reinforcement and 19 million liters of diesel. This is the economy that this bridge is on its own command for Nigeria and Nigerians who trade in these businesses because they need to be supplied, they need to be paid for, and they are also commanding labor within this community. And I think the last time we checked, it was a thousand four hundred plus MD people employed here, indigenous people. So to build a road like this takes time, but we are fully committed to see that we do it within the shortest possible time. The, uh, the road has three contracts on it. Uh, Section 1, uh, uh, Abuja to Kaduna, which is the longest, to four kilometers. Then uh, Kaduna to Zaria, which is um, still over 70. Kilometers, 74 kilometers. Then Zaria to Kaduna to Kano, 130 something kilometers. So you see, 
different contracts but on one road. Mm-hmm. So the way Elema will view it is like I want the road from Kano to Abuja. So, but this is the beginning of the story of the prosperity that this bridge brings. And those who know it better than me, real estate administrators and valuers, will tell you that from the day this bridge started, the price of land around this place has begun to go up. And that is prosperity coming. So, from those people who are the urban poor, to the transporters, to the owners of quarries and uh, borrow pits who make money from each truck that comes in just to lift materials, whether it's laterite, whether it is gravel, whether it's granite or sand, from the food vendors who participate and sustain supply of nutrition to all the men, to suppliers of lubricants, diesel, to transport owners, to drivers, all the way to people who traverse the road, whose journey and travel time and travel cost and travel experience is improved because it is become more efficient, to people who used to sleep on some of those roads who can now do a journey they couldn't do in one day, twice a day. So you can best imagine how it would have been when there was no rot in their community. And you know rot is an investment. You invest money. In fact, before we embark on any rot, uh, as, as engineers, I think the engineers do subject the rot into analysis some rigorous analysis using some scientific formulas to come out with the viability status of that road, whether it is viable or not viable. So it is after that we embark on that road. All this includes steady progress on the construction of the Oju Loko Oweto Bridge over River Benue to link local in Nasarawa State and Oweto in Benue State, and the Lokoja Obajana Kaba Ilori Road, Bida Lambata Road, the dualization of Suleja Mina Road, Kanu Meduguri Road, Enugu Potako Dua Carriageway, and Onisha Enugu Expressway. Also, the study progress on the Bodo Boni projects and the ongoing and completed inner roads in 43 federal universities across the country. We are right here at the local Oweto Bridge. As part of the Bold Faces Federal Government at Work Inspection Tour of the 1.8 kilometers of the local Oweto uh, Bridge that links Nasarawa Benue all the way to Abuja. The link is very, very important because it is very, very short to Abuja. And we are very happy and uh, sincerely happy and grateful to the, uh, the minister. Um, we are presently here with the Honourable Minister uh, of Works and Housing, His Excellency Babatude Raji Fashola San. The residences, you are welcome to this very area. We are so excited. I want to inform you that uh, the entire people of Adatu are very, very happy with Mr. President. I am saying this because this is first in history. We are having this gigantic project. So I started by telling you that this is the river Benue. You all know some of you have been with me on the bridge, second bridge across the river Niger. So the second Niger bridge is also going on. There is the Econ bridge. And there are, at the moment, 37 bridge works, either construction, repairs, rehabilitation going on across Nigeria through our ministry. And some of those repairs are the Todd Mellon Bridge, the Chachangri Bridge, the Mutala Mohammed Bridge in Koto Tonfe, um, the Isidoro Bridge in Kotako, the Tatabu Bridge that we live in uh, Kanu. There's a lot going on across that even people do not see. But just to close, 
This government in spite of very, very limited resources, also having to borrow is simply doing almost the way impossible in terms of infrastructure. Uh, I continue to wish that President Mali was president when Nigeria was earning more than dollars per barrel of oil per day. It would have been a different country. But well, in spite of that, he continues to give support. His commitment to infrastructure and his understanding of the purpose of infrastructure for growth and development is very clear. Activities we are conducting to showcase precisely what this government is doing in laying the infrastructure you know, uh, developmental program for Nigeria. As uh, if you recall, that two weeks ago we were also in Lagos. Uh, to inspect with some of you the Lagos Ibadu Standard Railway. We believe that this is the best way to answer the naysayers who continue to rail that they do not know what government is doing with the loan they've taken. I'm glad that you got here before us and you have had a censored tour of this project. For the submission of this bridge by Baba Muhari and Baba Tundera Jibashola, today we have Nassim P. Bukun Benwe and Osanasi. And it has become this city. By the grace of God, if not for the sake of this bridge before, to have security agencies to cross, or to have security agencies from here to cross is very hard. That is why the crisis is escalating every day. But today, with this bridge, we still asking you, still waiting for you. There should be a stabilization of our uh, army barracks, either in Nasra or the, the boundary of the river in Nasra or at the boundary of the river here of the United States. So that there will be enough security and there will be lasting peace in this new environment. And when I came to this Oweto, I discovered that Oweto has become a different place. First and foremost, I have to appreciate the president. What you did not see and we didn't go to look at is we have come to look at the bridge, but you didn't see the suppliers. So the area will tell you how many of the community members are benefiting from this just by selling lateral, lateral soil. Every truck of lateral, the contractor pays at least six to ten thousand naira. So the landowner from where lateral is taken is making money every day. Then of course there's diesel, there's cement, there's aggregate, there's sand, and so on going on. All of this the contractor does not own. When we pay him, he orders them from different suppliers. When I first came here, there were dozens of men and women here who used to feed the workers. So every labor here earns between three to four thousand a day. If you calculate that in a week, that between fifteen to twenty thousand a week, already more than the monthly minimum wage. The food vendors here. Sell food for between 200 and 250 naira every day. And, and every day we make anything from 4 to 5,000 naira as profit. So, this is what infrastructure does, the unseen work that infrastructure does, that the president is doing by redistributing wealth just by creating such a project. During a recent stakeholders' town hall meeting held in Kaduna, in attendance, the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, organized by the Federal Minister of Works and Housing. First of all, I would like to express to you the warm greetings of Mr. President, His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari. And I want you to please appreciate that he has sent us here for three reasons. He has asked that I come as his eyes and ears
to, ex to really look at the state of affairs on this uh, Kaduna, uh, sorry, uh, Abuja Kaduna Zaria Road. Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola SAN reiterated the commitment of the federal government to completing the ongoing reconstruction of the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kanu Dua Carriageway. Stating, Mr. President is more passionate and concerned about finishing this road and many others before his constitutional term ends, with a view to changing the national economic trajectory in the infrastructural sector. Now, to the questions that have been asked about the delay, one of the reasons for the delay, and I'm happy we are all here, is that we awarded this road, I think, in December of 2018, was when it was awarded. Shortly after we flagged off the road, we received a letter from senators in the National Assembly asking the federal government to expand the road from two lanes to three lanes. That wasn't from us. It was from the National Assembly the senators and they wrote to the president and copied my ministry we eventually got a directive from the presidency to undertake that expansion but for us to do that we needed to design an expansion because there are about 40 different bridges on this road so if they are going to expand from two to three lanes a new design needed to be created to reiterate what Julius Berger has told us in conclusion is that by the fourth quarter of 2022, the section between Kaduna and Zaria would have been completed. That is progress. That's something to look forward to. By quarter one of 2023, the section between Zaria and Kanu will also have been completed. That is something to look forward to. And that by Second quarter of 2025, uh, section one between Abuja and Kanu will be completed. That doesn't mean that nothing will be done there. It just means that that is when it will be finally finished. Well, uh, what, what can we say that has not been said? All over the world, uh, infrastructure is a big ticket item for every government in the world. Once you open a road to a community, you have opened a window of prosperity to that community. And as I continue to say, it's a way to redistribute wealth fairly and economically and, and, and equitably across strata of society, from the professionals, engineers who are involved with design of road architects, quantity surveyors, to the ordinary laborer who just uses his strength on a daily basis. And for this project, I really thank God because I can say that I have a lot of benefit from this project because since we are doing this project, we are trying our best to do the job and the company also are trying their best, paying us what we are due for. And the benefit is that we have been able to feed our family, pay our children's school fees, and all this, whenever we reach out, our children will look at us smiling because we have something to offer them, just because we are busy and we are not handled. So these are all the people we are reaching. These are all the people, poor people, mainly, that the president says in 10 years, we will have reached 100 million of you. And it's already started reaching them. So they are not necessarily all people that the government has to directly employ. If I own land around which a brand new road has been built, my rental value, my capital value of that land goes up. The government has reached me. It has added value to my life. If I'm working on the side, government has reached me. I want to talk about my own family. I feed them with this money. I do a lot of things, even the grand ones, the step ones. I do a lot with this money. So I thank the federal government, you know, and the company for empowering the youth so we can be happy in our country.
We can be happy everywhere we are. Without the rod, there wouldn't be uh, access to market if that community is endowed with uh, uh, agriculture or solid minerals. If you open a road to that community, they have access to move their goods to the uh, nearest market. The, the benefit of, uh, of taking a road from point A to B, aside from movement of goods and services, there are so many, it's a window of opportunity, to a, to a, a, a window of prosperity. The projects undertaken by the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing has effectively succeeded in providing more infrastructure and created 49,080 direct jobs and 95,315 indirect jobs in the highway construction sector nationwide. This has helped in wealth redistribution, deliver improved public quality services, stimulate economic growth, create jobs and generally improve the quality of life of Nigerians. Uh, let, me, let me quickly speak to the investors. Uh, that's a special intervention by this ministry as a contribution to education. Uh, education is not just how much is spent in the Ministry of Education, it is also how much is expended in terms of the infrastructure. So the Ministry of Education will probably not have a complement of builders, and the capacity to build roads. And so a ministry such as ours can intervene. I think we're in about 44 schools, uh, federal institutions across the country. We are getting more demand nationwide. We finished about 18 or so. And uh, it has been quite impactful in the lives of the students, the lecturers, and the university community in terms of appeal to go to class, uh, enthusiasm to receive lectures, uh, desire to live on campus so and for us this is positive but let me also say in terms of federal roads you you will not see us uh, in a sense commissioning federal roads federal roads are long and so they're built in sections some of them 300 500 600 kilometers they are not like state roads where you can commission a 10 kilometer road so as we are constructing some contractors have completed their own sections, some 60 kilometers, some 100 kilometers, some 25, depending on. So, and we are opening all of those to traffic. So, even the Abuja Kano Road, as we speak, some sections have been completed and handed over. The lane marking has been done, but the road is still not finished. But as we are completing the sections, they are put to use. That's the, that's the challenge with our, with our roads. They are long roads covering states. So they may finish in one part or in one place and still have work to do. But we can't lock down the roads. So as we finish building, we open. So there are many sections like that of Lagos Ibadan that have been completed. People are driving on it. There's no ceremony because it's, it's not com compatible for ceremonies really. Welcome back. I hope on today's episode we've been able to provide an insight knowledge on what the Ministry of Works has achieved. Mr. President Mohamed Buhari and the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN, have continuously shown their commitment towards renewing our country's aging and insufficient infrastructures. Next week, our focus will be on the housing sector of the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. My name is Trisha Esegbe Kerry. Be good and stay safe. This is Both Faces Moments. It's bye for now.